Hi guys, in this video we'll look at disaccharides, glycosidic bonding in condensation, glycosidic bonding in hydrolysis, and then we'll finish with a summary. So a disaccharide is another type of carbohydrate molecule that you need to be aware of. So when we form a disaccharide, what we've done is we've joined two monosaccharides together, and this is in a reaction called a condensation reaction. So let's say we start off with two monomers of carbohydrates, which are monosaccharides. And remember, monosaccharides are the simplest units of the carbohydrates. And if we add these together, in the reaction we form what we call a disaccharide. And you can tell how many monomers make up each of these, as mono means one, whereas di means two. So disaccharide is any carbohydrate made up of two monomers. And the reaction that forms this is known as condensation. And for any biological molecule, making larger chains out of individual units always involves condensation reactions. So they have some similar properties to monosaccharides. Like monosaccharides, the disaccharides are sweet tasting and they're soluble. For example, they dissolve in water or in the blood. And so we can still term them as sugars. So when describing or defining a disaccharide, a disaccharide is a sugar which is composed of two monosaccharides joined together in a condensation reaction. So try and be specific in your definition. It's not just two monomers, it's two monosaccharides because it's talking about sugars and carbohydrates. And talk about how was this made? How did we make this? Well, it was through a condensation reaction. So be specific in your definitions. And of course, because there are different combinations of monosaccharides, we can get different types of disaccharides being formed. For example, if we take two monomers which are both alpha glucose and combine them together, we form a disaccharide called maltose. So assuming both of these monomers are alpha glucose, adding these together and allowing them to take part in a condensation reaction, we then form the disaccharide known as maltose. So each of these are still alpha glucose, but now they're linked together. So maltose as a disaccharide can be found in germinating seeds, so seeds that are just beginning to sprout and grow. And basically they're broken down as more complex carbohydrates get broken down for energy. So inside the seed, because it's germinating, it needs energy. And so what it does is it breaks down larger carbohydrates into individual units, which are disaccharides. And these are maltose molecules. And it's these maltose molecules that the seed uses for energy. Another type of disaccharide is made up of alpha glucose and the monosaccharide fructose. And if these two come together, the disaccharide which is made is sucrose. So one monosaccharide is alpha glucose, addition of this to fructose, again allowing condensation reaction to occur. We then form the disaccharide known as sucrose, where we've got the alpha glucose and fructose now joined together. Sucrose is a disaccharide that we find in plants quite a lot. It's transported in the phloem tissue to provide sugars to other parts of the plant. So when a plant carries out photosynthesis, it uses sunlight to produce sugars in the leaf. So inside the leaf we have photosynthesis occurring, and this makes sugars. And the plant stores and makes these into sucrose. And the sucrose is an important energy source. So the plant still has to carry out respiration, so this sucrose has to go up to various parts of the plant, including the flower, other leaves, and also down to the roots as well. So it goes down to the roots, and it goes up to flowers, and it's used as a source of energy. And it does this within phloem tissue. A final example of another disaccharide is where we have alpha glucose again and the monomer galactose combining to form a disaccharide called lactose. So you may have heard of some people being intolerant to lactose, which is where they cannot take this disaccharide in properly. So we have glucose, and remember glucose has alpha or beta isoforms, so always be specific about putting alpha or beta. Adding this to the monomer galactose, again a condensation reaction forming the disaccharide known as lactose. To try and remember this one, remember that galactose has the lactose in its name already. So where do we find lactose? Well, we found it in the milk of mammals to provide energy for the infant mammals. So when a human mother feeds their young with breast milk, the milk contains lactose. So inside milk, we have the disaccharide lactose. So here's a summary just to go through each of those disaccharides. We have maltose composed of alpha glucose and alpha glucose and it's the energy source in germinating seeds. We have sucrose made of alpha glucose and fructose, and this is transported as sucrose around the phloem of the plants. 
and lactose is a disaccharide made of alpha glucose and galactose, and it's the energy source found in milk. So we've already mentioned that when two monosaccharides come together, through a condensation reaction, they form a disaccharide. And we need to talk about the type of bond that we form between these. So remember, we have monosaccharide coming together and being added together in a condensation reaction to form a disaccharide. And the only thing that's changed is that now these two monomers exist bonded together as a group of two. In any condensation reaction, so this is found as well in proteins and nucleic acids too, but whenever we form polymers from monomers, a condensation reaction creates water because from this structure we remove one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms, and these are removed from the monosaccharides. So here we have two monosaccharides, number one and number two, and when they come together they need to form a type of bond. But in order to do this, they have to have a particular group of atoms removed because their chemistry needs to change. And what we remove is the OH of one and the H of another. And you'll find that this is two H's and an O, and therefore this is what gives us this water. In removing the water, we obviously produce the molecule water, which is a waste product, but also this oxygen is then free to make a bond and connect these two to make that disaccharide. So the removal of water bonds the monosaccharides together making the disaccharide and the bond between them is known as a glycosidic bond. So this is what we end up with afterwards. We've had that removed H2O which then leaves and the oxygen that was remaining on one of those hydroxyl groups because if you look we didn't take both hydroxyl groups we only took the H of one of them and the full group of the other. So there's still this O here left to form that bond and the glycosidic bond is where the two sugars are connected via this O or oxygen atom. So it's this bond which is the glycosidic bond. And when you see the disaccharides you can see this oxygen as the kind of bridge between them. And a glycosidic bond is a covalent bond because it's involved in sharing of electrons formed between two monosaccharides formed by a condensation reaction. So just be specific, what is the bond, what's its nature, what is it between and how was it made? Glycosidic bonds obviously can be connecting different types of sugars, but we can name them depending on which carbon atom they're formed between, because this can vary. So the example we just looked at above is where we had two alpha glucoses joining together. But if you remember, alpha glucose is what we call a hexose, and a hexose has six carbons. And what we tend to do with sugars is we actually number the carbons so that they have their own specific unique number. And we always go from the sort of three o'clock orientation. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's the same for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And when this glycosidic bond is formed, it has to connect two of the carbons together. And in this case, we're connecting the number one of one and the number four of the other. So in this case of maltose as the disaccharide, the bond is formed between carbon one of one and carbon four of the other. So the way that we name this glycosidic bond is a one comma four glycosidic bond. In other disaccharides, we can have different carbons involved. For example, with beta glucose, it's one six. So it does vary, but as long as you know which number carbon it connects, this is how we name it. Which carbons and then the glycosidic bond. Of course, we can break down disaccharides too, and disaccharides are broken down through a hydrolysis reaction to form two monosaccharides. So remember, hydrolysis is whenever we break polymers down into monomers, and this can be for proteins, carbohydrates, etc. So here we have a disaccharide with this glycosidic bond here, and essentially it can be broken down back into the two monomers which formed it, two monosaccharides. So this is the reverse of condensation, and it uses water, and so we call it hydrolysis. And of course, going backwards would be condensation. So, because this is the reverse of condensation, any hydrolysis reaction requires water to be put in, because one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms need to be added or replaced to the disaccharide. So remember, it's all about changing the chemistry to make or break that bond. Here's the glycosidic bond between these two monosaccharides. In order to reform those monosaccharides and destroy this bond, we have to add H2O back in, because one of these needs its OH, and one of them will take the O, but it will need an H as well. So we have to add water back in. So the water breaks 
the glycosidic bond and it forms the two monosaccharides which are now separate again. So here's the glycosidic bond and if we add water to this you can see that we've got two H's in an O. One O and one H goes to one sugar and the other sugar takes this O that was in the glycosidic bond but it needs an H to form that group fully. So the H also comes from water. So you can see how the components of water get integrated in. We now have two separate monosaccharides which are no longer connected and the disaccharide has been broken down. And if you think about hydrolysis as the adding of water to break something, because lysis means to break, you can remember that hydrolysis is breaking down. So here's a summary in a table of the condensation and hydrolysis reactions for the carbohydrates. So for condensation, monosaccharides are joined together, whereas in hydrolysis, monosaccharides get broken apart. Condensation makes water, whereas hydrolysis needs water. Condensation creates a glycosidic bond, hydrolysis breaks a glycosidic bond. And again, if you ever get mixed up between these, lysis means to break. And so we're breaking apart monosaccharides, we're breaking water to make it into two sugars, and we're breaking this glycosidic bond. Condensation also starts with a C, and it may also start with C for create as well, if that helps you. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.